valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's video is about one of the most unique articulated locomotives ever built, and that is the Erie Triplex, built in 1914. So the actual story of this unique articulated locomotive begins in January 1912, when George R. Henderson, consulting engineer of the Baldwin Locomotive Works, attained patent number 1,013,771, which covered an invention in the field of locomotive construction that created much publicity. And this, of course, was the triple articulated compound locomotive generally known as the triplex. And to those who worked on the railroad, they called it the centipede. And that was simply due to the fact that the locomotive had 24 driving wheels. So the first engine built to Henderson's patent specifications was purchased by the Erie Railroad in 1914. And that they intended to use for pusher service on Gulf Summit Hill near Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. The locomotive was named after Matt Shea, who was a veteran Erie engineer with an outstanding service record. This locomotive exerted a tractive force of 160,000 pounds, which is basically exceptional for that time. And that was working in compound mode. And as one could reasonably expect, that exceeded any previous locomotive ever built to that point of time, which was 1914. The wheel arrangement was 28882, the rear group of drivers and the, uh, and the trailing truck being placed under the tender section. Flanged tires were used on all the wheels. The total weight of the locomotive was 853,050 pounds. And steam was used in two 36 by 32 inch high pressure cylinder was exhausted into four low pressure cylinders of 36 inches by 32 inches. Another fairly remarkable number for the time was that 90% of the locomotive's total weight was available for adhesion. And of course the advantage to that would be on severe grades. And in those conditions, that's where the weight of the tender materially detracted from the net hauling capacity of any other ordinary locomotive of the day. So we've already mentioned that the locomotive used six total cylinders. So to break that down a little bit more and how they work, the right-handed high-pressure cylinder exhausted into the two front low-pressure cylinders, while the left-handed high-pressure cylinder exhausted in, in, into the two rear low-pressure cylinders. And the exhaust from the front low pressure cylinders escaped up the stack, and that created a draft for the fire. Where the exhaust from the rear low pressure cylinders was discharged through a pipe at the back end of the tank. These cylinders were located at the forward end of the tender section, and the exhaust steam, before escaping to the atmosphere, passed through a feed water heater. The weight carried by the rear group of wheels was necessarily variable and the rear engine was designed to develop less tractive force than either of the other two. So the, in the event if the water tank and fuel spaces were nearly empty, there would still be enough weight on the rear group of driving wheels to develop a full tract, tractive force. And since this locomotive operated chiefly in short runs uh, for pusher service, there was usually an ample supply of fuel and water in the tank when the engine was working at its maximum power. The boiler of this triplex engine was a conical type. It had a Gaines firebox in combination with a combustion chamber 54 inches long which extended forward into the bar a boiler barrel. And when the locomotive was operating at full power, it consumed more coal that can be fired by hand and therefore a street mechanical stoker was applied. The triplex locomotive used a Schmidt superheater which allowed for 1,584 square feet of superheating surface which was a very unusual total for that time frame. The triplex used Baker valve gear throughout the locomotive and the three sets of gears were controlled simultaneously by the Ragonet power reverse mechanism. There was also two feed water pumps to supply the boiler and there was also two injectors provided in case of emergency. Another point of interest about this locomotive was the fact that it used very few parts that weren't already tried and tested in earlier Malay articulated, articulated locomotive design. So basically, materials and parts wise, nothing was particularly new with this locomotive that hadn't been tried previously. Unfortunately, the triplex was a, a design of grand ambitions and the 
design failed in two important res respects. Number one, it could never have generated enough steam as both the boiler and the grate were far too small. And number two, the couplers on most freight cars couldn't stand the strain of the enormous pulling power this design could muster. And as evidence to this kind of pulling power, the Matche, which again was the first of the uh, three locomotives built for the Erie, did start a train of 250 coal cars, but the run only lasted 17 miles before the force, force of the pull broke one of the couplers from a coal car and stopped the train. And of note, this is exactly why much later the C and O Railroad limited the Allegheny locomotive to 100, 160 cars simply because of the threat of coupler damage. Overall, these locomotives can be seen as a failure rather than a success because they were limited to pusher service and could never be frontline locomotives. And also, there was no possibilities that the locomotives in general could be simplified for later use in any other service simply because even for starting, two of the three revolutions of the drivers would have exhausted the boiler. So overall, only four of these triplex locomotives were built Three being for the Erie Railroad, and you guessed it, the fourth one was built for the Virginian. Which, to me, is no surprise. Simply because, it, throughout its history, the Virginian was not shy about try, trying new locomotive types. And as mentioned earlier, none of these super engines of their day was very successful, and their poor steaming qualities were incapable of supplying enough power for the six huge cylinders. All three of the Erie engines were dismantled between 1929 and 1933, and the Virginia's model, which was numbered number 700, was rebuilt into a 2880 uh, type in 1920, this reaching the end of its road in 1936. So with that, the following specifications apply to the Erie Railroad's 28882 triplex locomotive. The year built was 1914 by Baldwin. Three total units were built. The valve gear, gear used was Baker valve gears. The driver wheelbase was 49.50. Engine wheelbase was 71.5. Ratio of driving wheelbase to overall engine wheelbase was 0.69. Axle load was 70,100 pounds. Weight on the drivers was 761,600 pounds. The engine weight was 853,050 pounds. The tender loaded uh, total weight was 316,700 pounds. Total injured engine and tender weight was 1,169,750 pounds. The tender's water capacity was 11,600 U.S. gallons. The tender fuel capacity, which is coal, was 16. Minimum weight of rail calculated was 106. Driver diameter was 63. The boiler pressure was 210 PSI. There were two high pressure cylinders at 36 inches by 32 inches and four low pressure cylinders at 36 inches by 32 inches. The tractive effort was 176,256 pounds. The factor of adhesion was 4.32. The firebox area is 468 square feet. The grade area was 121 and a half square feet. And finally, the railroad classification was Papa 1. And with that, we'll wrap up the video. We thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. Both help the channel grow greatly. Also, turn on all of your notifications if you want to see all the videos that we upload on a daily basis. And visit our print shop at nickelplate limited at etsy.com. And we thank you once again.